Hey guys, and welcome to my video on estimated tax payments. So we'll get into details about estimated tax payment calculations, the penalties, how the software calculates the penalty and estimated payments, of course. But the most important, I think, is to actually understand do we need to make those estimated tax payments? Maybe it's better to just deposit the money to your like, checking account and get that interest income to cover estimates. So anyways, let's dive in and let's find out. So let's start with what are estimated tax payments and why do we need to pay them? Uh, so basically the IRS came because they always need money and they need money throughout the year as your client, um, the taxpayers, is earning income, they came up with this concept, estimated quarterly tax payments. So pretty much if the taxpayer is not only receiving wages but have additional income that doesn't include withholdings, like let's say it's an investment income, rental real estate income, it can be uh, income from partnership or business income or income from S Corp, you name it, like any income not associated with their employer, they will probably need to pay tax by the end of the year. But IRS wants them to pay their taxes as they earn this income. So that's something they came up with this concept like, okay, they want them to pay quarterly tax payments. The so tax payments are due uh, four times a year. So it's um, for a period uh, between January and March, they do, um, I'm sorry, January to April, they do April 15th and June 15th, September 15th and January 15th the following year. So four times a year. And why do we need to pay them or our clients need to pay them? So basically they need to pay them because there's a huge penalty. It's 8% per year since that payment was due. So for example, if the payment was due April 15th, they'll calculate the penalty from April 15th until January to estimate that penalty. So penalty is 8% this year. So that's kind of the reason why we need to calculate the estimated tax payment. So when we prepare tax return, as you can see that form on the screen right now, you don't have the tax, that penalty on that line next to tax liability. Taxpayers who need to make estimated payments typically fall into four categories. Corporations, the self-employed, and those with substantial and tax or non-employment income and individual taxpayer who expect to owe 1000 or more of spike in income. So now you can see this diagram that shows how much income each type of category of taxpayer needs to earn in order to be required um, to pay estimated tax payments. So for corporation, it's 500, for partnerships, S Corp uh, shareholders, as, uh, some sorry, self-employed freelancers and individual taxpayers and whatever people with passive income, it's $1,000. So it's, if you make, if your client or you make more than $1,000, you probably need to make estimated tax payments. And why I say probably, I'll tell you in a second. So how to calculate estimated tax payments? So there are a couple ways to do it. So first of all, let's start like when do we know that the client will owe some estimated tax payments? So if they owe more than $1,000 of tax liabilities that year, most likely they will owe some um, penalties, right? I mean, estimated payments needs to be made. Well, it needs to be made is like a very strong word. It's not mandatory. It's just something that they suggest because I was reading lots of articles and it was just saying, oh, it's they require, they must. There is not such a thing. It just to avoid penalties, we should pay estimated tax payment. But it's their choice. It's a choice of a client. It's a choice of tax accountant if they want to pay or not pay those estimated tax payments. So anyways, how to calculate it? So there are a couple of ways to do it. One of the ways uh, to recall it safe harbor for our, for us, our tax preparers, we have this concept. And the safe harbor, harbor is the law that IRS has. So basically to avoid the penalties, we need to make a payments that equal 90% of prior year tax or 100% of current year tax. If the client making more than 150K a year, they need to make 110% of current tax liability to avoid the penalties. And let me show you on a screen the tax software and how it's 
uh, like how all the calculation is done on the tax forms and in the tax software so it will make more sense to you also i just want to mention quickly there is this concept annualization so if you're the seasonal worker or if you not receiving that income throughout the year you can just include that you pay only certain quarters not all of them so for example i'm as a tax professional so all my income is coming before tax deadline so it's april 15 and let's say september 15. so i would just make estimated take pay payments just twice a year to cover this income but anyways this video is about like when you actually make majority of your money throughout the year not just certain dates so let's look take a look at the form and how it is calculated all right so the easiest way is to one of the most clear ways for us tax preparers to explain how to calculate tax estimate is to show you the form, right? So let's take a look at this form 2210 that is underpayment of estimated tax. So this is where uh, the tax basically tells us how much estimated tax payments are and how to calculate the penalty. So let's start with the structure of this form. So uh, first of all, it tells us like, oh, who needs to file this form? So basically anybody who potentially need to pay tax penalty and as we already discussed, uh, owe more than $1,000 needs to file this penalty and estimate their tax liability, right? So we owe more than $1,000. If you don't owe, we don't have to fill it up. If you do, then we have to fill up this form and kind of like figure out our penalty. So uh, for this tax return, I was trying to make it as simple as possible. And obviously this is example with no numbers. So I just entered 100,000 of Schedule C income and then we have adjustment to income, which is um, it's a self-employment tax deduction. Then we have itemized deduction for a single payer and we have QBI. So this is our taxable income and our taxes for current year would be 23,354. So I'm sorry for this. <laughs> I'm trying to not to sit all day and you know be a little bit active. So this is our taxes for current year. So this is after math. So when I'm preparing the tax return, I can actually calculate this penalty by using that form. But this video is more about like calculated estimated tax payments for the future. So for example, now it's 2023. So I'm calculating estimated tax payment for 2024. But this is really good example to see what it will need to do in the end of the year and how it will impact our tax return. So you see like this year, uh, whatever is the year we're preparing tax return, this will be our tax liability, 24,436. So that will consist of two, uh, consist of two numbers, 23,354 and the penalty of 1,082. So this video also, like I talk a lot about penalties. So this is our penalty. This is what we're trying to avoid by making estimated payments. All right, so let's see how it's calculated. So basically what this form does, and I already discussed this with you. So to make calculate estimated tax payments, it's or we take, so for example, this is our tax liability for current year, right? So we take 90% of it, uh, and this is what we, supposed to pay throughout the year to avoid that estimated tax payments or we take 100 percent of prior year tax right in this case i used 110 percent in this form because the income is higher is higher for a single taxpayer so so it will be smaller of 90% of current year or 110% because this is this person earns a lot of money above threshold uh, or this amount. So it will be smaller of those two. And the smaller is 90% of current year. So this is the estimated tax payments we need to pay throughout the year. And I'm sorry if I'm screaming. I'm just too excited about this topic. So if you divide that amount by four, which is for estimated tax payments, this is what it is. So each quarter they have to make those payments, right? And in this case, I 
assumed I didn't the taxpayer didn't make any of them so in the end of the year they have to pay this penalty of 1082 so this is kind of how estimated tax payments are calculated very general overview and then i'll have another quick video about penalties but let's go back to our agenda so interest rate uh, for quarterly estimated payments is set every quarter by IRS by adding 3 points, 3% 3 to federal short-term rate. So for example, in 2024, the short-term term rate, I'm so sorry, it's just really confusing sometimes, it's 5%. So if you add in 3% to 5% and that's how we come up to this interest rate is 8%. I mean, obviously IRS, we don't have to calculate it. We just go to IRS website and they provide it to us for 2024 for each quarter. And also we can take a look and see uh, how much they were like a previous year. So for example, only two years ago, so we jumped from 5% as a penalty on estimated payments to 8% now. So it's like a huge jump. That's why like now it makes, I guess even more sense to pay estimated payments than before. So usually what IRS does, it just takes your tax liability. Let's say 90% of your prior year tax liability is like 20,000. So this is your uh, estimated tax bill that will be in the end of the year. So they multiply that by 8% and supposedly this will be your penalty by end of the year. I mean, it's not calculating exactly like that and that's why I wanna go over this form that calculate penalties and kind of explain you how much it actually will be. So it will be less. And the reason why, because you pay 8% on each quarter till the end of the year. So let's say Q1, you will pay more and then Q2, you'll pay less. And then Q4, you pay much, much less than 8%. But let me show you the numbers because it's really confusing to explain that without showing actual numbers. Let's go. All right, guys, so now, Second part, estimated tax penalties, how they calculated. So we have this number and it pretty much tells us uh, it's in worksheet calculations. Won't be here, it's gonna be separately. So let's take a look how it was calculated. So here is our worksheet to calculate the penalty. And let me walk you through it and explain. So here's our estimated tax payments. So this is uh, our total liability for the year divided by four, right? Four equal amounts. Then all these parts, uh, and I made an Excel schedule. So I'll go to Excel schedule because it's easier for me to explain by showing you the formula. But in general, those are days since it's calculated for a period uh, between April 16 to June 30th. So it's calculating how many days it was by this specific day, right? So. For example, in this column, it will be from June 15 to June 30th, which is 15 days. In this column, it will be from July 1st to June 30th, which is 92 days. But then from, from when? From September 15 to September 30th will be 15 days. So that's kind of calculation. Let me show you Excel because I think this is much better. So this is exactly the same schedule, but it has formula, so it's easier to explain. So let me show, explain you the first period. In blue, those are interest rates for each period. So for example, let's go through the first one. So we'll calculate number of days between, um, between what? It basically says uh, for the first period, so we do it, um, it, we do it, I'm sorry, before, Oh, this is a little bit bizarre. But anyways, this is from June 15 to June 30th. And this is for all this first period. So it's actually, it's 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 just a little bit um, not uh, straightforward, but it's for a full period, 76 days. So it will be two and a half months from April 16 to June 30th, right? So this is amount. And we calculate, then we do this, um, number that it actually will be uh, multiplied by. So this number is number of days 
divided by 365. So we calculated 76 days and we calculated 15 days and here we just divided by 365. The interest rates are interest, the short term federal interest rates are posted on IRS website. So for 2023, they were 7% for first two quarter, and then eventually they uh, increased to 8% for last two quarters. And for 2024, they will be 8% for first two quarters, and who knows, they might increase to 9% or say 8% for the rest. So that's kind of like, so then the calculation would be that amount multiply by this whatever number we try to call include number of days and multiply by seven percent so let's say on 415 on this first rate period we pay 76 percent that will be our penalty for this amount then we calculate second period so second periods it's um, it will be like much higher it i mean not much higher it will be also from july to whatever to september 30th so it's 92 days and that will be also we divide that number by 365 and multiply by 6% and this will be our inter penalty for that period in any case and we do it for each of those pay per rate periods 1 2 3 4 right and the rate periods end june 30th september 30th december 31st and then april 15. so for this first q1 payment for a full year not paying that q1 estimate will make the total penalty of 397 and that will consist of those three amounts and i did the same calculation for each quarter right so it's the same this one will be smaller and then this one will be even smaller for Q3. And then Q4, that's super easy. So Q4 will calculate the number of days from January 1st, 2024 to April 15, 2024. That so will be 91 days. Then we'll uh, divide that number of days by 365. And then that number multiplied by 8%, that will be our penalty. So for not paying Q4 estimate tax payments, we only pay $100, right? Anyways, so total of those four amount will be 1,081 and I'll compare to the software right now. So this is the total penalty we pay. And we, if you compare percentage wise for each quarter, so we get almost 8% for Q1, 6.3% for Q2, 4.6% for Q3, and for Q4, we'll get only 199. What I'm trying to tell you this, I'm sorry, like why she is explaining this, right? So what I'm trying to say, like 8% is actual rate or like, let's say 7%. But if you multiply our total required payments by 0.8%, that will be like a higher amount, right? So this is what, if you think we'll just multiply the total tax payments liability by 8% and this is, will be our penalty. It doesn't work like this. So it works more like gradually decreasing because the amount from a due date for Q4 to actually when it's supposed to pay, it's not as many days as for Q1, right? So obviously for Q1, we'll actually pay almost 8% or average between 7 and 8%, but then for Q3 and Q4 and uh, we'll pay much, much less. Okay, so this is how the penalties are calculated. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Let's just take a look at the tax form one more time. Okay, so here we have those 1,083 Z82 that agrees to my Excel schedule, but that's kind of how they did it. They just added up all these numbers and they did exactly the same calculation. So it's smaller. For Q4 payments, it's only 105. For Q3, it's summary of those three numbers. Then for Q2 and Q1, we add those numbers. I hope I didn't lose you and thank you. Let's move on. Alrighty, so let's talk about what you actually want to find out is what makes more sense to make those estimated quarterly payments and not to pay penalty in the end of the year or not making them. And let's say deposit money to, you know, to the checking account and get that interest income. 
So, in my opinion, I think if you compare both numbers from today's lesson, from today's video, we can see that if on li tax liability of 20,000 20, that we need to pay in the end of the year, if we don't make estimated tax payment, we'll make a, in the end of the year, we'll have to pay a penalty and the penalty will be around $1,000, right? That's something we agreed on. So now let's compare how much is the interest rate on deposits for a checking account nowadays. So it's around four or five percent. So if you multiply that 20,000 that you decided not to pay tax liabilities and just deposit to the, you know, just checking account to get interest. So you'll get the 20,000 multiplied by, uh, by what? By four or five percent. So you'll get the same thousand dollars in the end of the year that will cover your penalties. So, but something I want to mention because before I jump into conclusions. So when you get interest income, interest income is taxable. So that would be your additional income, right? So those thousand dollars from checking account as interest income will add up to your taxable income and you will pay like, let's say 25% tax. On the other hand, if you pay and, and then you pay penalties and penalties are not tax deductible. So that's just kind of like an issue that I can see there. But in the end of the day, is if it's a business owner, if your client is deciding between pay, paying 20,000 a year for estimated tax payments or doing some kind of expansions for their business or something else, or just investing them into just regular checking account, I would recommend not to pay estimated tax payments. I'm sorry, tax professionals. I know it's our job to you know calculate and do all this kind of stuff but economically I mean honestly it doesn't make sense to me it's not a big difference it's not a big amount and if a business owner if I was a business owner I would invest it into like whatever financial instruments or your business or whatever in any case I hope this video was helpful I really hope you're not disappointed by whatever my ending or my conclusions and uh, thank you so much see you in the next video if you're interested and you like how I teach or how I explain I also sell online courses I also do CPA um, I'm sorry tax preparation outsourcing so I help your company to do tax preparation let's stay in touch and thank you so much bye bye